This is Soph. This is Rich. And we are from oh across God. the oh pond. pond. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weekend, people. Well, how is how are you? It was the weekend. The weekend's gone now, Sunday. It was just about over, but we still got a little light left. Yeah, well, I haven't got light here. It's nighttime, dark. No light here. <laughs> Weekend is done. Dusted. It's done. So I have a different cup today, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, go on. Tell us why, and then tell us what you've done this weekend. It is opening football day. The Eagles are playing the Falcons. American football, obviously. American football has kicked off. And just, I know you're a diehard fan, but be honest. Do you think the team's going to win today? Yes, we are already up. I, I'm... <laughs> I, I really love this show because I am moving. I've left the television to do the show. So, you know, I love you guys. So show me some love. The Eagles are winning so far. Go on. By how many are they winning? We're winning by nine points. Ooh. Right. I want to say nine points. So what else have you done this weekend? Or eight. No, nine. Huh? What else oh, I helped a friend of mine move. I am so sorry. I helped a friend of mine move, which was an all-day affair. What yesterday? I, that was my yeah. That was my good deed for the day. Is that? Did you help him in your new handy truck? Mm-hmm. That's the only reason you said yes. Is so you get to drive around in that truck. Lifesaver. I was a lifesaver yesterday. Get in. Everyone needs a lifesaver every now and then. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yes, I use Silverado. Get in. Get in. How about you? Enough about me. How about you? Yesterday. What? Oh, yesterday went to the shop. <laughs> yesterday went to the shops with Alfie. Um, because this boy, I tell you, has got my memory. On Friday night mm. he had a really bad nosebleed in the middle of the night um and i was trying to calm him down you know but i felt sorry for him because as his nose was bleeding he was just like this because he was so tired so i was trying to get him to stay awake then he was getting upset so i said to him come on you're fine i said i'll tell you what why don't we go to smith's toy superstore tomorrow and he went, <laughs> I said, yeah, why don't we go and have a look? <laughs> that was that. Didn't say nothing else. So yesterday morning, got up. The usual, he got up at like half four. Seven o'clock in the morning. Do you know what he said? Clothes on, Smith's Toy Superstore. And I was like, <laughs> you obviously haven't forgotten. So yeah, we didn't obviously go that early because the shop wasn't open yet. But when the shop was open, dressed and ready, he was dressed and ready. He was already there. Um, so yeah, he had a he had a new car, a new Hot Wheels car because it was a traumatic experience. Um, so yeah, we went to the shops. Um, the sun has actually come back over here, which great is, is it welcomed? Let it stay. Great. Yeah, yeah, and then today we went to the park did a bit of food shopping and then I have been trying to think and put some planning into my birthday. Oh. And I know people which is might, ways away. I know people might think it's early, but that's going to be here before really you know early. It. And everything's going to be booked up. I need to be all, I like to be organized and I need to be organized. Listen, I have been born a week before Christmas for nearly the last 40 years. So I know people get booked up. They got Christmas parties to go to. We've got no money because it's Christmas. We can't do this. We can't do that. Where early. I don't want to leave it to the it's last your party. minute. It's your party. You do what you want. I don't want to leave it to the last minute and people say, oh, no, I'm really sorry. We're, we're booked up with that. Oh, I can't give you that because we're booked. Oh, man. Yeah, that's sold out. I would cry. Rubbish. Right, it is garbage. <laughs> All right, so serious right. Sunday, and let's be honest, it's, probably, it's not going to be that serious, um, because we've got a guest now. It should be ready, so I'm just going to press the button. 
um, yeah, we got a guest. None other than Roy. Than Roy He's been on man. before, yeah. The myth, the legend. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Roy. Hey guys. Roy, Roy, as back. you've come Welcome back to join back. us, now let me just say, you've come back to talk about two of our, your favourite Fs, of one of ours, food, obviously, and fashion. Mm. Now, I can't tell you how upset Rich was last time he was here and he missed out. I like, know. He was so gutted. There was, was conversation. So there was conversations we had before you came on Mm -hmm. and he was like well i'm not talking to you about that i'm not talking to you until ro comes on and we do the show and i'm like oh, yeah okay then you come on so i still don't know yeah first i'm a little jealous because i watched your instagram live and you were at this shindig <laughs> of a party <laughs> I, was I was like the we, other day did we just become friends <laughs> I, I, I want to invite to one of those those little shindigs right there is where I need to be. Well, you, Ro, Ro you've definitely made it across the pond because I didn't even know you was on a live. He told me the next day. Mm. Do you know what? I think I, I think I went on a live right at the end of the night, and then I realised what I was doing, and then I deleted it. Oh. <laughs> there was a, a, a few too many drinks involved. At that I was going to yeah. say you, you were too, having too a good. Drink. Well, guess what? It was. It looked like fun. It was lavish, and it looked like a lot of fun. Okay, Rich. Let me it just tell good. you this: if you have yeah. a night out with with uh, Roy, generally you can't remember a lot of it. And I have got <laughs> friends that say to me after we've been out, "Oh, how was your night out?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, this happened, that happened. We got so drunk." And they say, "Oh my god, I want to have a night out with him. You always have the best time." Yeah. It's always a good laugh, man. I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not one of these people that goes in uh, kind of half assed You've got to go in all, all out, right? You either all the way in or you all the way out. That's it, that's all it. the way in. I right. am mad. Now, we're just going to jump straight in to talk about food, but I'm going to okay. I'm gonna let Rich ask the questions because... I want to know, <laughs> what was your first dish you ever made and what made you decide that you wanted to become a food blogger? All right, so uh, first dish I ever made. Um, ever made. I mean, it could have been, it can be ham and eggs. I don't know. All right, uh, well, I think the first dish I ever made was a pasta then. Um, mm -hmm. Something quick, something simple. You know, I don't think you can get you can get a pasta wrong, really, can you? You um, can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Um, but yeah, I think it was just a simple tomato pasta with some herbs. Uh, I think it was, I think that was it. But the first kind of, I'd probably say the, the, the toughest thing I made was like a, an Indian chicken curry. Mm. Um, cause I've been watching like my dad cook from a very young age in the kitchen. So he kind of just like forced me and my brother into the kitchen just to kind of watch, um but you didn't you didn't really have to tell me more than once I was I was kind of fascinated by it so I was like I'm here I'm, I'm taking notes um so yeah I think the first time I made that in my like teens by myself uh it was it was good I mean it wasn't up to the same kind of level but it was yeah. good but yeah it's one of those things right you can never really emulate what your parents do even now to this day I'm like there's always something missing yeah, yeah, never taste, never taste the same. Never taste it. Yeah, like my it, father it, and I, my my father and I share recipes, and I tell you right now, he is the master. I can't, I can't emulate him at all. He'll tell me to try, it and he'll go tell me what's missing, and I tell him he, <laughs> he, put it in the oven. Yeah. That's what's missing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what made you want to become a food blogger? Your many talents, one of your many talents. I think like from, from, from again, from years ago, I've been taking photos of food like years ago. Like I think from when I was like 20, 21, when I first had my real, uh, my, my first phone with a proper working camera on it, I was <laughs> like, you know, okay. So I think I was at university and we'd go out for these meals and I'd start taking pictures of my food. And I'd also start taking pictures of the food that I cook. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, I look back on like old computers. I'll, I'll be back. I'm just carry on talking. <laughs> I look back on old computers or like hard drives. And um, 
I've just got like an encyclopedia of pictures of food. Yeah. And I was like, what, what, what the hell have I been doing with this? Just hoarding these pictures for no reason. Uh-huh. So like, I should have started this years ago when Instagram even first became a thing, you know? Because if yeah. I had, like, by now, I think I would have been one of those ones with, like, millions of followers, who knows? But yeah. uh, I think, like, last year in lockdown, I was like, okay, I'm going to do something which I probably should have done a, a long time ago, but I'm going to blog about the food where I go eat out. I'm going to blog about the food that I cook. I'm going to put up some recipes. And if people like it, they like it. And yeah. I think so far... Some people do like it, so it's yeah, working out. I like right. it. I think yeah, cheers, man. I think I'm so I'm so sorry. Friends. Somebody was just letting off some fireworks outside, and Alfie get is a bit scared. So, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. It's all good. My first dish I've ever made was scallop potatoes, and it's just potatoes and cream sauce. It's yeah, it's a yeah. We call, that's like it sounds like dauphinoise. Dauphinoise, yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, do you call them? The scalloped thing. potatoes. Yep. They're like sliced in like little that's almost right. like chips and they're cooked in cheese and, and cream. cream. Yeah, that's yeah. that's dope and wild potatoes. My first dish was um I don't know, I don't know if it was my very first, but it's the one I can remember. We used to do cooking at school, me and Michaela. And for some reason, every single week we'd always make sweet and sour chicken with rice <laughs> and then just eat it straight after. You know, like most kids take their dishes home. <laughs> we would just make it and eat it straight away. So what makes you want to, now that you've dabbled into your photos of food, now you're into fashion, how does that correlate with your, your food blog? Do you intertwine them or are they two separate entities? The, the, they were two separate entities, um, but I quickly realized after a few months that it was way too difficult to keep up with both you know like with the fashion one um it's a big interest of mine and it comes very easily to me you know I've I've kind of worked in fashion before I've blogged in fashion before but not to this extent not on a social media platform so um yeah I I started it and I I found my niche pretty quickly in my in my living room in my house you know and this again I was talking to a, a lot of other guys who were doing the same thing and I think I said the same thing to you, Soph, last time when we had when we had this uh, chat. You don't know or you don't see what's on the other side of Instagram unless you actually search for it, right? right. So when I started the, the fashion page, I was just searching for men's fashion, men's fashion. And all of a sudden, all these guys were doing the same thing that I was doing. Mm-hmm. I came across guys who I had known from college days who were doing the same thing, but almost in secret. Mm -hmm. And the reason they were doing it in secret was because they didn't know, and don't get me wrong, they've got like 10,000 plus followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were doing it in secret um, away from their family and let's say real friends um, because they didn't know how it would go down with them. Right. Um, And I found that quite, I found it kind of shocking, but I also found it a little bit like, yeah, I can relate to that somehow. Mm-hmm. But I kind of thought, forget that. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it with everyone knowing what I'm doing. Like, uh, I've, yeah. I've got no qualms in, like, telling people what I'm doing. So, yeah, yeah. my pe- my people kind of knew straight away. They were a bit like, what is this? Uh, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and I was so like... You came out of the secret society of men's <laughs> fashion, huh? Yeah, they were just like, what, what, what are you doing? And I, th- I think when I showed them a few of the other guys that we might know or mm-hmm. um, just like what other people kind of do, it became more acceptable to them. Um, not that it has to be something which is accepted. It's just it's just clothing, for God's sake. You know what I mean? It's, no, yeah, it's yeah, nothing yeah. like Everyone wow. wears it and everyone needs it. Let's be honest. Exactly. And you know, what? if I can if I can help people kind of uh get an idea or like a clue of oh shit that looks good i like that i'm gonna go buy that you know then cool cool all right you are you are a trendsetter now i have to say i do keep nipping in and out but i don't feel bad because i had you all to myself last time i know rich has got heaps of questions so just keep it rolling people keep it rolling (laughs) (laughs) jeans or slacks uh uh, i'm gonna go with jeans you're gonna go with jeans yeah Loafers or sneakers? Sneakers. Sneakers? 
if you had asked me about five years ago, five, ten years ago, I probably would have said uh, loafers or like shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what inspires you to do these things? Like, I know you just I know you just didn't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be a food blogger. You said you had a list of photos and you said, you know what, I'm going to just put these to use. What made you want to wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm going to venture out in the secret society of men's fashion blog <laughs> and, and see where it goes? What made you want to do it? Well, the food actually came first anyway. So the, so the food came first, but I kind of thought to myself, you know what, um, if, I can, if I can create an interest, if, I, if people like the stuff that I'm putting out, then I, it will tell me that I need to kind of continue what I'm doing. Yeah, so yes. it started off very much about because obviously in lockdown we couldn't go out and eat anything you know and all, all of my pictures pretty much were from restaurants around the world right. um so i was like okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cook i'm gonna i'm gonna show people what i, I can cook it started off very humble very small as as it always does um i unfortunately wasn't one of these overnight successes um right right and, you know, and, and I wanted to keep it kind of organic and real. Like, I, you know, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do the whole buying followers or that kind of rubbish. on. Just Instagram. like us, we don't do that either. Can I just say? No, of course. Yeah. We don't, so, honestly, you know, we don't. Thing during, the biggest thing during pandemic was baking bread. That was the big yeah. thing around the world. Everybody was baking their own and making their own bread by scratch. Did you notice that? Did you know that? Well, I, I did. Over, I did the same over here. Flour was one of the things that went off the shelves with toilet paper. So <laughs> it was. It was yeah, flour, yeah. and like one of the biggest things to start with was banana bread. Everyone was just doing banana bread. Yeah. Um, so that was actually one of the first things I made on my on my page was banana bread. Um, but then, yeah, as as time goes on, like recently, I've shown on my page that um, I have a really big interest in fine dining um, and Michelin star dining. Um, so I pushed myself to actually cook a fine dining meal at home. And that, that kind of doesn't just mean plating it all fancy, but actually mm -hmm. showing skill and different techniques in the food that I'm cooking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a, a lot, a lot of stuff that I've learned in the last 18 months that I kind of didn't know, but you know, everything. I like it when you show videos, like in the kitchen, how you've made things. Point number one. Point number two, I really don't know no. why someone's letting off fireworks. It's not Christmas. It's not a religious ceremony. I'm really sorry about today's show, but I have no idea. I really want to crucify someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it, it, you know, it's, I, think, I think what I'm trying to say is it's, it's a passion. And, like, you know, as with any passion... You, if you're good at something, and this is one of this is kind of one of very few things for me that comes naturally. Um, right. So I think if you're good at something, you should try and make the most of it, and you should show people what you can do because you don't know uh, further down the line what that could turn into, right? Right, right. Because I can't wait to see you in one of these food magazines. Right. <laughs> and can we just get on back now? By the way, hopefully yes, for the rest of the show, can we get onto this? exotic foods you rich went shopping oh, and yes. heaps of exotic meat i want to know what it tastes like and you won't discuss okay. it with me without roy here so yes i have i found a store here locally that sells exotic food like alligator camel um kangaroo yeah ostrich um ostrich right. i just had i just made an ostrich patty the other day, which was actually delicious. You mean an ostrich nice. burger? An yeah. ostrich burger, yeah. And I had a camel patty too, which is a camel burger too, which was actually pretty good. Well, listen, if, <laughs> if good I job did it, say so myself, good job it weren't a camel toe. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see how she slides that in. I can't wait for her book to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so questions come on so join this yeah so going back to these exotic meats have you eaten any exotic foods meats yeah um when you just said alligator i've eaten alligator a few times i think alligator is actually quite nice to be honest don't, um, don't taste like chicken then don't you find like if people taste something they always say oh yeah it tastes like chicken 
Well, it, it is, it is, I'm sure it's a white meat. I'm sure it is. I, yeah, it's a white meat. No, yeah. they're green, aren't they? Crocodiles and alligators. <laughs> not their flesh, honey. Not not their flesh. So, um, but yeah, it has a fishy a substance. It has a fishy texture, oh. but it does like frog legs. I love frog legs too. Yeah, they, same. Have you had snails? Like, now that tastes like chicken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again, so if I reckon if you if you tasted it, I mean, you're becoming yourself very open to a lot of different foods now, and by uh, different foods, I mean vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you're not joking either. No, no. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, I think you know, I know seafood is like your kind know, of nemesis. Though, yeah. But I reckon I think... if let's just say snails, if someone was to cook it, pluck it out of the shell, and then put it on a fork and say, oh. Have a mouthful of this. Tell me afterwards. Yeah. Maybe You're taking all the fun out of it. No, I wouldn't do it otherwise. I'd overthink it. You know, no. What I was going to ask you, Rory, is <laughs> no. Um, like, well, I remember going to the supermarket with my mum when I was younger, and we'd always go through the meat aisle, and I'd always be fascinated by the section that had like lamb's heart, cow's tongue, mm. liver, kidneys, all that. Would you ever eat any of that? Yeah, I think kidneys and livers are fairly normal things to eat. Um, and I don't mind them at all. Um, I've eaten chicken hearts before. I've eaten oh, sheep, really? sheep's intestines. Um, I've eaten, uh, uh, what you call them, sweetbreads, which are, you know, glands. Um, sweetbreads. <laughs> from sweet, what, sweet from what animal? Um, I think it's sheep. I think it's sheep. Oh. Yeah. But um, <laughs> sweet, sweet breads are beautiful. And you, I, I reckon if you tried them and didn't know what it was, like my mom tried it and thought it was literally sweet bread fried. <laughs> <laughs> only, uh, only afterwards did I tell her, but she was too busy enjoying it. So I thought, when it's just went, a mental when thing. When you ate the chicken's heart, did that taste like chicken? No, it tasted like, like metallic, like bloody kind of taste. It tastes like a blood sausage. Oh, like yeah. black black pudding? Yeah, exactly. See, I, I, I want to try your fry ups. That's my uh, main goal. This is the I thing. That's all oh, he yeah. goes on about. Yeah, a fry yeah. up. A fry up is what's going down. I'm I'm going. That's what I'm getting when I get when I come there. I mean, the, to be fair, you get you get the same thing in the states. I've I've pretty much had like an American breakfast a lot when I've been in America, and it's very very similar. I think the only it's, difference it's the is same like thing. the only thing that we're missing is the beans. And yeah. uh, are and you really not peas. missing anything? I don't like baked beans and the mushy green peas <gasps> and, and no, the blood like sausage. It. Other than that, it's typically the same thing. I, mean, I don't know, I I don't know anyone that has a full full English with mushy peas, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, mushy peas don't go on a fry up, they go on um, oh, they don't. Peas. Okay, I'm just I'm just yelling out they're from fish stuff that peas. we don't eat here, that's what it is. I know it's beans and blood sausage and all that. Oh, you, should get, you should get a soap to send you over a couple of cans of baked beans. Oh, really? You don't have, I'm going to do that in the next We castle. have baked beans here. Oh, well, there you baked go be- then. But do you have Heinz baked beans? They're supposed to be the best. I don't like beans. Heinz baked We got so many different types of baked beans here. It's ridiculous. Oh, but I'll try it. If it's different, I'll try it. I'm she not a bean well. fan. I remember somebody said to me, my old boss said to me, try this other brand called Weight Watchers baked beans, right? She said, honestly, they taste so much better. No. I bought them no. and they were in the cupboard, I swear, for months. I kept looking at them, talking myself out of it. And then one day I thought, I'll blow it. Let's just eat them. I think for me, it's a texture thing because I was like, no, <laughs> no, it was just. A I no think no everything day. from Weight Watchers tastes like cardboard, but that's yeah. just me. Yeah. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I don't get the whole texture thing. That's never been a thing for me. Like, I know a lot of people um, like in my life that say, oh, I can't eat that because the texture feels really weird. And yeah, I don't do mashed yeah. potato for the same reason. That's well, I don't eat watermelon for that same reason. It's the texture. Oh, okay. my God. I love watermelon. But I do like sweet and, mashed potato. And the thing about it is, it's not that I've never eaten watermelon before. I've eaten watermelon as a child, sitting on the porch with no shirt, just going to town, to the Rhine. But now as an adult, I, I just can't. It just tastes disgusting. Well, have, you what, had it when it's, have you had it like barbecued watermelon? Barbecued watermelon. 
No, I did not. I saw that on a TikTok Maybe. video. Does it taste nice? Very good, very good. And she had it with balsamic vinegar. Yeah, yeah. If you drizzle balsamic over it and you have it with like, um, like you know, like fried halloumi as well. Oh, I in love like, halloumi. In like, a, in like a salad. It's so Yeah, good. I've had balsamic vinaigrette with ice cream. Oh, you know, no. Very, very good. What? Vanilla <laughs> ice cream. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, really boy, good. so is there one thing or maybe a couple of things that you are like, there's no way I'm eating that. You've either tried it and it's disgusting or you just are like, no, it's not for me. Um, like probably things that crawl, like uh, spiders and scorpions. Oh, so you wouldn't do like I'm a celebrity get me out of here challenge where they eat bugs no. and stuff. No. I've eaten chocolate covered crickets, so I can't say that I would never try it. I've done it. But they weren't alive and they were covered in chocolate. Yeah. Well, if, if they were dipped in chocolate and alive, I'd have probably still ate it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't it didn't bother me none. It was pretty pretty tasty. I've had it ants. like a peanut. Huh? You've had, you've had ants. ants. Yeah, yeah. I've had ants. Um well, and the ants was the ants were still alive as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean that's literally the size Protein. of a head. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I thought to myself, okay, I can do this. But anything bigger than that that crawls, like, no, I can't do that. Okay, so you've seen the film Alive, right, where that plane goes and crashes in, in the yeah. freezing. If you had to, would you eat um, somebody to stay alive? So I, I can't remember who I ha- was having this conversation with, um, but everyone was kind of freaked out when I said, yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't a big group of people, and... Um, I can't remember if I knew them that well or not. I can't remember who it was, but yeah, it didn't go down too well. I think everyone was kind of like, yeah, we're not inviting him out again. But. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't heard from them since, no? <laughs> uh, I, 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 well, probably not. Um, I, I, if, if you're forced into an environment like that, or if you're the only people left in the whole wide world and you've got you've to live, you know, y- yeah, yeah. How about you? Since you asked the question, would you? Or you just starve yourself? I think I'd probably be sick. I'd be sick just at the thought of it. Never mind actually watching somebody slice a chunk out of somebody's bottom cheek or wherever. But if they're there. dead, if they're dead and yeah, we need to survive. but it's still the thought of it. Like, it's a bit like, will I eat snails? No, thank you. It's the thought of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, my, my, my dish so far already knows. I grew up eating a lot of liver. Hmm liver and onions and liver and gravy and all any type of way you make it i ate it and as an adult the answer is no i or t- i told myself as a child when i become an adult <laughs> never i'll take again. a vitamin i'll take an iron pill before i take some liver oh what's that gullet. how come I, I just I just feel like I've just been burnt out. It's just been burnt out. Like I've you, you've been livered out liver so much. Yeah, I'm <laughs> livered out. And to the point yeah. to where now just the sight of it just deters me. Can we get on to talking about sweet stuff? Because last time I saw Roy, he made me some cookies. Was it uh what flavor were they? Pistachio and saffron? Pistachio and saffron, yeah. So they're like pistachio yeah. kind of. I'm gonna. I'm it, not gonna lie. They. I think they lasted two days. I had to send some to my mum. I'm a pastry man. I'm a pastry man. When it comes to it, it's cakes and pies yeah. and cookies. I'm not a candy person. Cupcakes, no, cupcakes, cakes and pies. I'm all in. I'm all. Yeah. A good donut will put will put me at ease. The the the, the thing is, I, I don't know if like uh, Sophie's told you, but like I. I used to have like a little, just a, just a little cake business um, yeah. about 10, 11 years ago. Um, and so I got quite good at making cakes and different desserts and stuff. Um, but I, I really don't like eating them though. So I, I can make you no, all the cake. You like well. making them. You just don't like eating them. Yeah. I, I only eat them to taste if everything is kind of on point. But yeah. I won't sit there and enjoy a cake or a cookie with like a cup of coffee or anything. No, it's not my thing. I, I've yeah. got to say cheesecake's All my right. favorite cake. If if I have a cake, it's got to be. See, cheesecake. that's my problem. I cook it and eat it as I'm going. And <laughs> done by the time I only have a couple to share when I made enough for an army. Hey, that's just me. 
yeah yeah I don't, mind, I, I don't mind making it for everyone else but i just w- won't eat it like. yeah i'm really funny about you know like whole cakes you know like a big cake that you slice up yeah I'm, I'm, people are gonna think i'm weird now but hey here i go i love chucking myself under the bus mm-hmm. so i like making cakes but i generally don't eat them myself i would make it if it's somebody's birthday or somebody coming around but then if i went somewhere that had a cake say i went to yours Roy you had made a cake and it was cut up in uh Sorry. like slices if other people were there like a party I wouldn't eat it just because I'm I've got this thing in my brain where how many people have you? touched that bit of cake before I eat it do you know what I mean and so You're if I go to like, if I go to like cafes or whatever like that I never have a a, a rare slice of cake and plus I have to see the cake whole like if they just had plates with slices of cake on, that's a no go situ straight away. <laughs> if I came to yours and I could see the cake whole and nobody had fingered it yet, then maybe yeah, I could I could see my way to eating a slice. But but like think, in a in a cafe, they're the ones serving you. No one else is touching that cake. Okay, but the person who made it's fingered it right to get it on there. Then the person who's serving you's fingered it to get it on the plate. But they're not touching it though. Well, yeah, touch- well, they've coughed on, on it. And a plate. Wow, no one's they, touching they, it. That, yeah, no. I just, I think too many people have fingered it before it comes to me, so I'll pass. We need to stop saying fingered. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the people have fondled the cake to where she doesn't want there it. There you go then. I personally will make a cake specifically for myself and eat it. Specifically for what? Yourself? For myself, yeah. Really? What, for mm-hmm. no, no apparent reason? Or has there got to be No apparent cake? reason. I just, I feel like making a cake and I would make a cake and I would eat it. Any particular flavor? Yellow cake with chocolate icing. Yeah, now that's just What's vanilla. It's just vanilla, oh, vanilla. Roy. Okay. okay. It's just vanilla. Yeah. Well, we call it yellow cake here. <laughs> <laughs> Is it actually yellow or just like white? Like... No, it's actually yellow. Okay. It's yellow cake with chocolate. Matter of fact, I'm going to send you a box of cake mix that's yellow. All right. I'm gonna send it in. I'm gonna send it in the box, and you'll see exactly. And wait till I wait till I come and visit. Then make it. Then I can see it, and I'll know it's only you that's fingered it, and said I'll be able to taste some. True, true. I'm and we can, you, we can we can video the whole favorite. thing. So I'm sure yeah. you're not like I'm sure you're not like that with my stuff. Otherwise, you wouldn't have eaten those cookies that I gave you. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I know that no, they have been in your house, or you hadn't been anywhere because you're you're you were germ foe when it comes to the whole Corona thing. So I know. I mean, I'm, I'm a very clean. I'm a very clean person. You exactly. know that. Um, but also now, now, now I've dropped the C bomb. I know we're talking about the two Fs, but we let's go through the alphabet while we're here. You did have Corona, right? I did. And I did, how yeah. uh, how was it? Bad? You know, like some people have been really bad, and other people have just yeah. had like minor. How was it for you? Um, I'd probably say it was not like I need to go to hospital bad, but it was bad considering I had both vaccinations um which shocked me it shocked everyone around me um yeah it just goes to show that you can be taking all the precautions you know possible which i was which you did of course of course like the first thing that everyone said to me was you of all people have got it like (laughs) what the hell um and it's true like i i took every precaution going and i think it's just like, you know, it's Sod's Law, like the week all the restrictions were lifted, um, I went to a chicken wing festival that weekend, <laughs> <laughs> as you do. <laughs> and um, it was an outdoor event, you know, it was a great event. Um, but the, the, it, it definitely wasn't from there. But what I think it was from was the train, which I got back from London to Birmingham, where I live. Mm-hmm. And on the train, no one else was wearing a mask but me um so and the train was completely like overloaded with people because i think the train before mine was cancelled so this was true two train loads of people on one train um and there were people standing up in the in in the aisle way the people sitting down like there's no social distancing because you don't have to anymore so Mm -hmm. it was you know it was whatever i put my mask on the whole time i went to sleep because i had had a few drinks and it was late in the evening um but yeah, I think, you know, the next day I felt 
hungover as normal. And um, that feeling just didn't go for a few days. So I was like, okay, something, something feels weird. So I did a few tests um, and I kept on testing every day. And I think on the third day um, it was positive. So I went and did a, uh, the, the, the official test, mm -hmm. um, the one where they swab you and stuff. Um, and then that came back positive. And then I, yeah, I had full blown Rona and um, it, but yeah. does that deter you since you've had it and you've had the vaccine? Because I try to explain to people just because you have the vaccine, it just prevents you from it prevents you from long lasting, you know, debilitating illness. Like, you know, people who don't get it end up in the hospital. Yeah. People who do have the vaccination, you, it doesn't say that you won't get it. It just prevents you from being on a ventilator yeah. and fighting for your life. You know what I mean? So as I'm saying this, I seen this party of yours with nobody masked up. No. And it was it was a good, it looked like a good time. Were you were you thinking about corona at that point in time? Like, should I wear a mask? Shouldn't I? Should I should I have a mask in my pocket just in case? Or oh, I've always got a mask in my pocket. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I think like I've been out a few times now ever since I had coronavirus myself, right? But I I would like to say that I kind of I tried my best to recover and recuperate the right way. So I didn't I didn't rush back into doing anything. I took the time to rest because I've I've read and watched documentaries of people that have had long COVID and how debilitating it is for them. And um, they have just said the best thing you can do is not work, not rush back into normal day, everyday life, just rest. And resting for me is like the most boring thing ever, right? Just lying down on your sofa or in your bed, watching TV all the time. There's nothing worse than that. So um, I was like, okay, I got used to it. But then I started doing different things. I was steaming three times a day. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I bought different, like different vitamin tablets. I bought bone broth, apparently bone broth. is really good for your, your inside immune system. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good for your immune system. Apparently bone so. Broth. Um, and for yeah, healing. I was just doing for all healing. these different things. Um, I was taking turmeric. Oh, I'm, I mean, turmeric's nothing new to me. Like, you know, being, being from an Indian household, I've been taking turmeric mixed <laughs> in with, with, with milk from a very young age anyway, because it's got antiseptic healing properties. Um, yeah. And only now the rest of the world is waking up to, oh yeah, let's have a turmeric shot in the morning. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. we've that been doing that for like 20 years. Um, but, it, you know, I think now I've been out a few times. I've been to a few bars. Um, I've been to a club. So the event a couple of days ago, it was a controlled event uh, whereby yeah. it was invite only and everyone had to prove that they'd had two vaccinations. Or, oh, okay. Yeah, or um, a negative test within 24 hours. Oh, wow. Now, that's Can I just I'm say, talking. I note that you dropped that in there. It was invite only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> invite only secret Can you hear that, Rich? our name's not down we are not coming in mm -mm. But no of course i think with it it doesn't matter how safe it is you know someone can just slip through the nets anything can happen right someone right. might not have symptoms whatever um so anything could happen and i think it was for me it was a great networking event so i got to meet a lot of other foodies and influencers who i've been talking to for a while online Mm -hmm. but we got to, we got to kind of make these connections real um and meeting complete strangers for the first time and just striking up some sort of connection as well so yeah speaking to randoms who i don't know there was a lot of hugging there was a lot of drinking there was a lot of yeah other things so it was uh, <laughs> it was it was kind of like an entry back into normal normal life normal you're saying back into normal yeah. life i was going to say do you feel like going out to eat has changed since lockdowns have lifted compared to what it was like, say two years ago, has going out to eat changed? Do you think a lot? I think when, I think in April when lockdown first lifted and we had a couple of months off, you have to book everything. Mm. You have to make a reservation for everything. You have to make a reservation for even just going for one drink, mm -hmm. you know? 
um the the frustration with that because you everywhere was just booked up in months in advance so that was tough that had definitely changed the whole hospitality industry you know um but i think ever since july when everything opened up properly again mm. and you don't have to book anything anymore um you can just turn up and you don't have to wear masks or anything um i think the industry is getting back you know get, kind of getting back to it um it will take a long time to recover but i, I also think that the enjoyment has well for me, it's it's enjoyable to a certain extent if I'm going to try a new place. Right. I'm not going to, like, I don't feel like I'm going to enjoy it just for the sake of it. Like, you know, just if someone's like, oh, do you want to go out to eat? You know, if I've, if I've been out quite a lot recently, I'll probably say, do you, do you prefer to come to my house instead? Um, mm. It's it's a toss up now because I eat out. I have eaten out quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to get too bored of it. Is yeah. there one place on your hit list that you want to, you, you really want to go to? Like what's on the top of the wish list? Since, since pandemic, since, you're, since the world has opened up over there, what's one place you want to go to that you haven't even touched base yet? Um, sketch in central London. Sketch. What sort of food do yeah. they do? So sketch is quite a quirky um, collection of restaurants, shall I say. It's like in one building. It's got, uh, I think, four or five different uh, restaurants and bars in there, um, all different themes, and they all have Ooh, different yeah. foods. So I think there's a bistro in there. There's a, like a, a pink-themed room, which is just like everything is pink, and they do like afternoon tea in there. Then they've got like a three Michelin star restaurant in there as well. Um, so I would just love to like over the course of one weekend just kind of like just go around the whole building <laughs> just just stay in that building yeah nice well that i mean like fun. if you if you let me uh, remortgage my house maybe i can afford to come with you <laughs> <laughs> i, I got to i got to find where you work i want to work where you work at well i've i've just started work again actually so <laughs> I, you know after after having like 4 months out so it for me again with the whole recovery from covid it kind of worked in my favor touch wood that you know i was able to without having to stress about work yeah see the problem that we're having here and over across the cross upon is that people don't want to go back to work a lot of people are working from home but for the restaurant business is taking a huge hit because of the unemployment and the extra bonus that they got for unemployment so a lot of restaurants are are hurting for employees because they're making a lot more money in unemployment than they were if they were working. So yeah. the restaurants here are taking a big hit. There's a lot of restaurants that would love to show off their skills, but they don't have enough employees. Or you go to a restaurant and it's a 45 minute wait because they're short staffed. Mm. Which we, is the, which is still the case over here. Yeah, I was um, going to yeah. say we have that here. I went yeah. to lunch with Fiona a couple of weeks ago, and we got there, and they were like, "Oh, it's a thirty-minute wait for food." <laughs> when you're yeah, starving, a... that's not really what you want to hear. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, it, it's it's quite prevalent. Even if you've booked and stuff, like you can sit down. Your drinks will take a long time to come. Your food might take longer than normal, or you yeah. know, between courses, you might be waiting an hour. You know. And then, yeah, obviously, because you're hungry and you, you're expecting service, 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 yeah. because you're paying for it. But then you you forget that actually they don't have the stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, it's like it's like a, a, a takeout that I ordered yesterday. Um, I waited an hour and a, hour and forty minutes for it to come because they only wanted to use their own drivers uh, rather than kind of using a third party delivery company. Right, right. Um, but because they're using their own drivers, their own drivers are completely just overworked and driving here, then everywhere. So yeah. my food came, my food was cold, my food was terrible. So, you know. <laughs> oh, that was my next question. Was it worth the wait? But no, it wasn't at all. And, <laughs> no, no. and, and that review no, is coming. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a friend. I have a friend and... Uh, when they go out to eat, if it ain't right, they're 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 on it. They're giving them a nasty <laughs> ram. 
in a heartbeat. I'm like, I don't think it's nasty. I think it's just honest. It's your honest yeah. opinion. You know, I don't, don't generally think people go out to be nasty. I just think if you've had a bad experience somewhere, like 10,000 people go to a restaurant and then you go there and you don't have that same experience. I really hate that when you're looking forward to going somewhere because people have really ramped it up and then you get there, the service is rubbish. The food actually ain't all that, you know, um, but like I say, that's just my one opinion out of all of the people that have been there. And why should I lie and say it was great when it wasn't for me personally, you know? Mm. I think what, what I've realised, because I've, you know, I've eaten out quite a lot. What I've realised is that, like you said, being honest is one thing. But at the same time, um, I would rather just give them constructive feedback. So I'm not going to pick yeah. on every, I'm not going to pick on every negative. Because if there were positives, right. then like before before I write a review, I'll you know I'll think about okay which positives can cancel the negatives. What don't I have to say? Um, right, right. I don't I don't want to put people off going altogether if there were actually good things about the place. Do you um, leave a tip when you go out? Always, I always leave a tip. I find so, with English people, we only do it when we. For me personally, I only do it when I go on holiday. I don't generally do it here unless. The, the venue is off the scale the service is off the scale every mouthful i literally could have died for other than that i generally don't tip the the thing is in the uk service is included service and gratuity is most is i'd probably say 90 percent of the time yeah. included right oh it, okay yeah like from, they from put like, it at the bottom of the bill they put your break your bill down food drink da, 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 da. then they give you the total and then in really small writing underneath it says optional um service charge and then they add it on so small writing it sometimes you wouldn't even notice there and then they say oh this is the total of your bill so they add those two together now on occasion where i've had a bad experience i say actually no i don't want to pay that i want to pay the above amount without that and they just don't question it but i did go somewhere uh, last weekend i think and they never had it on there which i that was that's the first time for a while i haven't seen them put it on there mm -hmm. Well, see yeah. here, when they do gratuity, it's a real fine dining or if it's more than if it's a party. So if it's a party, they do gratuity. They add the, they add the tip in because they're working a large party. So they don't feel it's, you know, I think it's only right that they add gratuity because if you got one person who's working at whole party, a party of 10, a party of 15, not everybody's going to leave a tip. You but know this what is mean? what I mean. Who should get the tip? Should it be the waiter? Should it be the chef? You know, who? That, that's, that's the thing. In, in, I think in the States, Rich, isn't it right that, you know, the reason why you leave tips to individual waitresses and waiters is because their, um, their actual pay is very low. It's like right. it's like minimum wage or less, right? Right. And yeah. what happens is you're helping out you're helping out the waitress and the bus boy. But here, they split those, if, they if split you, those tips. If you leave yeah. a tip, nine times out of ten, they have to put it in a pot behind the bar and then split it amongst everybody who's worked that night. Which, if you've mm. got one lazy bum who ain't pulling their weight, I don't agree with that. Which is why, generally, one of the reasons why I don't tip. If it was guaranteed to go to the server who had my table. But I'd think a different story. But even then, why don't you tip the chef? Because he's the one that cooked your dinner. But the chefs are making a lot more money. He's than making, the, he's making three times more yeah. than what the waitress is doing. Tell you that much. He don't need a tip. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> his, tip is, his tip is salary. That's, that's me told. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Roy, before we let you go, if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? You have to eat I every day. I don't, I, I don't know. So if you asked me this before, I can't. I can't give you that answer. How about dessert? Oh no, he's leaving oh. dessert. <laughs> I think if if oh gosh, okay, one meal for the rest of my life. It will be a collection of things on one plate. Sweet, that was if, a good if, answer. If, that, if that's okay with you, then I well, you're changing through. the terms and conditions, but okay, well, we'll go with it. <laughs> I mean, I'll have chicken wings. I'll have a steak. I'll have a Thai green curry um i'm sure uh, maybe even some pepperoni pizza as well so yeah <laughs> so you're basically having four meals in one <laughs> possibly possibly for the rest of his life one more question from me 
Pineapple yeah. on pizza, yes or no? Absolutely, yes. Yes. Yeah. Get, are you both? I would never hey, understand when people say no. Pizza, yes, I love pineapple. ham and pineapple. Oh no, that's so boring. Like, just add pineapple on it. Say you got a meat feast where it's got all the different meat, meat lovers. Pineapple. Then chuck pineapple on it. Additional. Don't just have ham and pineapple. Sweet and oh, savory. I'm, I'm I'm with Rich on that. I would just prefer it with ham and mushroom and pineapple. Boom. Who asked you, pair anyway? Rich, have you got any <laughs> other questions for Roy? No, my questions have been answered. I'm looking for an invite to one of these parties when I come into town. That's all I'm down for. Well, I was, you've got a long wait because I haven't even been invited. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to some of my local friends and they're like, it looked like it was something like, you know, that show Made in Chelsea or something like Made in Birmingham. I was like, yeah, yeah maybe not quite, but um, it was definitely a, a, a good event. Are we going yeah, to Ma- are we gonna see you on MasterChef anytime soon? Maybe I've applied already. Who knows? Ooh. Oh, oh my God. Now, snap. listen, you will be famous after that. So you're going to have to come back on the show <laughs> when you are. Don't forget about us. Remember where it started, right? This is like propelling you into stardom. <laughs> you're really like from the ground up. So when... <laughs> as long as I don't lose in the first round, then yeah, we have all good. Listen, it's not if, it's not if, it's when. <laughs> exactly. And don't you watch these reality shows? It's always the losers that make it further in their career than the actual winners. That's very true. You never mm, lose. You true. win or you learn. Remember that. Mm. Look at that. I like it. Look at that little nugget of knowledge. Look at that. Love a nugget, mate. Love a nugget. <laughs> well, I just want to apologize, Roy, for interrupting, bobbing in and out of your um of your no list. worries. I had your back, girl. Did you ain't wrong with this time? Do you know what? Was Actually, carrying you today. There was no fireworks. I did it on purpose to let this bromance grow because I know how much rich Mr. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> I think we did. I think so. <laughs> All right, Roy. All right, Roy, man. Thank you again for coming Thank you. on. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming back, and we'll see you again when you are famous. <laughs> I'll be back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Hey, man, thanks again. Bye. Appreciate Bye. you. All right. Oh. No, Wasn't that exciting? I, know, and I, just I love me some Roy. I yo. just can't believe some absolute bell end was letting off fireworks. Well, you probably got kids and you got teenagers in your neighborhood, probably. I don't it's know. It's nearly nine o'clock at night. They need a clip brown well, hero, I'm telling you. Well, that's when it's darkest and it's not too late. People are still up. It's not Some the 5th of November. Up. It's not New Year's Eve. True, but people like fireworks. They probably had some left over. Well, bang them off somewhere else. But anyway, I knew you two would chop it up, as Salty would say, while I'm not here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, uh, it's all it was good. a good time. It was a good time. Um, yeah. So, looking forward to the week, Monday tomorrow. Yes, and we have a meeting on Tuesday. We do. We have a business meeting on Tuesday. Then we have a show meeting on Wednesday. <laughs> it is all go. We're all in. <laughs> Now, can I just say, I don't mean to be a a party pooper, but I'm probably not going to play the jingle because I don't think Alfie's asleep yet. It's really loud. That's fine. (laughs) That's fine. We can can skip the jingle for one day. Just know. Yeah, I know. I owe you one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We're good. Um, So, yeah, Monday, tomorrow, a new week. New week. Everybody, thank you for listening and watching if you don't know yet and you do know we have our website up and running it's www.acrossthepondwithrichandself.com you can get your merch there you can catch we up have had pictures videos. coming in of people wearing the merch yes which is a beautiful thing if you do purchase something be sure to send us a picture of it and we'll post it on our instagram yeah, you don't have to be in it if you don't want to yeah, you can just show the shirt, cup, mug, coaster, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Also, you like- if you don't like looking at our pretty faces, we are on Spotify. Ooh. And mm. we are trending in 13 countries. Trending in 13 countries in Spotify. Yep. Yep. All right, Rich. Well, this is Soph. This is Rich. And we are 
from, from across, across the, the pond. pond. Have a lovely week, Rich. Hey, you too. Before we go, can I just say something? Yes. Tomorrow is 13th of September. Um, and it's my it, it would be my baby's eighth birthday tomorrow. So I just want to say I hope mm. she has a lovely heavenly birthday and um, happy heavenly birthday. And um, yeah, I hope she has cake because you can't have a birthday without cake. Yeah. Just don't let anyone finger it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <Yeah, burn. laughs> yeah,